All right, class, so this is the um, bicyclist uh, kinetic energy, potential energy problem from Alex. It is called using conservation of energy to predict the qualitative something. Um, and basically this is about energy transfer and it's, it's energy transfer not in the thermochemical sense that we've been talking about so far, but in the potential versus kinetic energy idea. So I think it's a really great question in terms of, of transfer of energy and, and conservation of energy. So you know, it's just a little bit different terms than we're, than we're used to, to using. So here we've got this bicyclist. He's going to sort of go down this hill, up this little hill, and then all the way down this big hill, and then sort of climb up this hill. So he's going to be moving left to right. And we've got all these different um, questions to answer. So the first question is, where would the bicyclist have the highest potential energy? And potential energy is really about just how high up off of the, the ground you are or away from the, the, the well here. So the highest potential energy is going to actually be where he's at point F. That's going to be where he's the, the highest up in, in space. So this is going to be the highest potential energy. So one way to think about it is if you're at this point and you fall down this hill, you're gonna fall further, right? You're gonna get speeding up faster than if you started, say, at, at point E. So along this graph, the point that's highest up in the air, that will be the highest potential energy. So that's um, point F will have the highest potential energy. Where would the bicyclist have the lowest potential energy? Well, this is gonna be exactly the opposite. So here, point D, that will be the lowest potential energy. Um, simply because we're sort of at the very bottom, right? You can't really go any further lower than this, uh, unless you dug a hole, I guess. But you, you, you know, in terms of, of transferring your energy from potential to kinetic, this is the lowest point. You know, you're at the, the very bottom, so that's going to be point D. We'll have the lowest potential energy. Where would the bicyclist have the highest kinetic energy? And really what this means is where is he going to be going the fastest? So as he goes from left to right here, he's going to pick up some speed, and then as he goes back up the hill, he'll lose some speed, right? As you go up the hill, you'll lose speed. Then you get to this point and you'll pick up a whole bunch of speed and then you'll start going back up this hill as you lose speed. So the point that the bicycle will have the highest kinetic energy, well, that's gonna actually be where he has the lowest potential energy. If energy is conserved as we go through this process, at this point, I've sort of uh, translated all of my potential energy into kinetic energy. So point D, I'll be going the fastest, so lowest potential energy, but largest or highest kinetic energy. Where would the bicyclist have the highest speed? Well, we just sort of talked about that. That's at this point D, he's gonna be going the fastest. That means he'll have the highest kinetic energy as well. Would the bicyclist kinetic energy be higher at A or C? So at point A, he hasn't really started moving yet. And then he'll go down this hill, gain some speed, gain some kinetic energy. Then as he goes back up from B to C, he's going to be losing kinetic energy again. But his potential energy is higher at A, and he's lost some of that potential energy at C, and that potential energy has been translated or, or you know, transferred to kinetic energy. So his kinetic energy at C is actually going to be higher. His kinetic energy, the bicyclist's kinetic energy will be higher at point C, because some of that potential energy has been transferred to kinetic energy. He's at a lower potential energy state, therefore his kinetic energy must be a little bit higher. Would the bicyclist's potential energy be higher at A or C? Again, potential energy is just about how high you are up. So point A is higher than point C, so there'll be more potential energy at point A, sort of the same sort of question as um, this previous question in terms of kinetic energy. All right, almost done. Would the bicyclist's total energy be higher at A or C? Well, in this example, the energy is being transferred, right? We always will have a conservation of energy. We're transferring from one type of energy to another type of energy. In our thermodynamic systems, we're type transferring from hot things to cold things, right? a transfer of heat, but the energy is always the same, right? It's always gonna be, be the same. So here, the energy will be the same the total energy, the sum of the kinetic and potential energies will be the same. Okay, this is the last question. Suppose the bicyclist lets off the brakes and coasts down into the valley without pedaling. No friction, no air resistance, or so in the physics realm here. Um, what is the farthest point the bicyclist could reach without pedaling? So if we just transfer all of the energy, just let this 
you know, even transfer of energy happen. If I start at point A and go down and go down and then start going back up, will I be able to get to point F? No, I will not because that's a higher energy state, right, than this point A. So point E will be the highest up, the furthest point I could reach at this same amount of energy. I start with some amount of energy, I transfer that potential energy into kinetic energy. As I go back up, I'm transferring that kinetic energy back into potential energy, but I can never get higher than that, that you know, amount of, of energy that I started with at point A, unless I start to pedal, right? Um, so for this last question, E is gonna be my, my final answer there. All right, hope that, that helps. See you guys later.